Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwafili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. Yes, we are. We are the indigenous people. Yes, we are. Because he forgot that part. Yeah. Oh, well. Hey, everyone <laughs> well, we knows have that. some really, really good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have some good news. Tell them the good news. Okay, let me go off by starting just reading the letters. No, we got a letter. I got to tell them. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> we got a letter about a week ago. Um, to inform us of some very good news. That's all I'm telling you. Okay, now I'm going to read the letter. So, Dear Siwapili, Rose Amador, and Sundas Martinez, I am writing to congratulate you for being selected uh, by a jury of distinguished judges and runner-ups in the Best Community Talk Show category for the First Nation Ethnic Media Awards. We want to let you know. We hope that you will be able to attend, etc., etc. And open up the second part. Yeah, let me read it. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnic news organization from across the country will gather at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. Honor the best of the, um, ethnic media. This event is being billed. The ethnic Pulitzer goes to Washington. Best wishes and congratulations. The most part. Which one? <laughs> it says we are. The uh, first runner-ups oh, in the, the best, com yeah, the, be <laughs> the most important line. I said that. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Okay. First runner-ups <laughs> is the best community talk show in the nation for, um, in the ethnic category. And actually what it was, um, the segment on Garbert Goodplume from uh, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And he came to talk about, he's with the Defenders of the Black Hills. And he talked about the preservation of Bear Butte in South Dakota and also the mercury in the water. Yeah. And about those runs that they do out there? Yeah. Runs. Yeah, the Sturgis runs and how they're defacing um, the sacred land up there. And, and really the motorcycle and all the different clubs should stop going there. So he's yeah. been an advocate to, um, to save the sacred lands. But anyhow, we had him on the show and we submitted that to this... Uh, Na um, what is Ethnic it? Media Awards. Ethnic Media Awards. Yeah. And so we're really excited about yeah. that. And um, so we get to go to Washington. Yeah, wow. But actually, we want to thank all <laughs> those who work with us, which is Kwasiwat and Yakoet, uh, who actually put the segment together and submitted it for us, and Sipat Singh David, yeah. and Steve Robinson, and Emerson Dung yes. for all their hard work. and helping us get that award. And Robert. And, and, and Robert. Robert. Don't forget Robert. I can't forget Robert, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> and also CTC, Center for Training and Careers, and the Native TANF program for being the main sponsors of our show. So we're really indebted yeah. to them for um, supporting yeah. us. Without them, um, yeah, without them we, we wouldn't be able to get a lot of good information out to the public and, and we wouldn't be able to get to this award and this wouldn't, you know, the, the stuff that we're actually putting out there is going national. So, yeah. and usually, you know, the, the, the information that we have out there doesn't go national. It's just pretty local or it's, or, or it's just by word. But now it's going national and it's going to D.C. and that tape is, you know, it's a great example of uh, what's going on in, in Indian mm -hmm. land. So we're real excited about that and wanted to share that with you. And now we're done bragging. <laughs> <laughs> but at this time, I'd like to introduce our guest for this evening, Mr. Lopez, 
Jorge Lopez from the uh, Native TANF program, and you are the executive director. Uh, that is correct. And you've been here with us before, uh, but yes, we I have. invited you back so we can find out what's going on. You can catch us up on the latest. Well, first of all, congratulations on your award. Thank That's you. very exciting. And if you guys need someone to carry your bags to DC, give me a call, <laughs> and I'd be more than happy to assist. Um, okay. There's been a lot going on in the program, as, as you may know, here in San Jose in particular. Uh, the program continues to grow and, and continues to learn and continues to help develop a, a real good working partnership with a lot of different agencies and individuals and families and more importantly is the work that's being done to serve the children and the families. In my mind I think that's what the program is about and we stay focused on that and, and helping people become self-sufficient here in San Jose. But you know beyond that there's been a lot of a lot of work being done on the other counties that we're still trying to to open up and develop and um, the last one online that's going to be up and coming here real soon is San Mateo. Wow. And San Mateo has been a, a real difficult one to get started for various reasons. One is the rental market's very difficult there. Um, another one is that it's just a, a county that's not really accessible to a lot of people um, in regards to the income bracket that lives there and, and so on and so forth. So we're excited to be able to open that up hopefully here in the next couple of weeks. And wow. at that point we'll that's be done great. opening up all our offices. Now Santa Cruz is open? Santa Cruz is open, yes it is. And where is that one located? It's in Capitola, and um, uh, the, the mm -hmm. site manager there is the name of a gentleman by the name of Steve Watts, who comes from uh, the Quinault Nation. Mm -hmm. And he's been working for TANA for six, seven years, so he's very experienced and uh, looking forward to, to seeing the work that he's going to do. Wonderful. I heard Jose Rodriguez is out there. Yes, he is. He's, yes, he is. Yeah, that's you know great. Jose. Yes, he's been on the show to talk about the Tarahumara Indians. Yes, yes. And the runs and the support they've done. And yeah, the very, state. very yeah. capable yeah. young man. So yeah, that's, that's wonderful. pretty exciting. So we have a good excuse to go to Santa Cruz. Right? Absolutely. And then we'll stop Absolutely. by the office, then we'll go to the beach. And we're going to have a, hopefully a grand <laughs> opening there soon. Um, we we theoretically wanted to have it during the summer to take advantage mm -hmm. of, of Santa Cruz and whatnot, but it'll probably happen in January or so mm -hmm. once the holidays are over and, okay. and whatnot. But, you know, beyond that, we've also been doing a lot of work in, in the Sacramento office in regards to, that's our biggest office yet. We have over 400 families that we're serving there wow. now. And so over a thousand children. And so there's a lot of different activities going on with that, with elders and with the youth and the families and whatnot. So that's been pretty fun to, to see that develop. And, and then help the other programs develop. So part of the challenge is the, the connectivity. Everything is, mm -hmm. needs to be connected through the, um, mm -hmm. through the internet and the computer systems. And it's just a lot of detail work. And, and fortunately, is, is we have a really good staff. Everybody's excited to come to work. And, and we're excited to be able to help the community. Well, that's great. I, yeah. I think I heard your Oakland and San Francisco offices Oakland, are up and running. San Francisco's open. Um, uh, San Mateo is, is coming on mm -hmm. soon. Santa Cruz, Santa Clara. Then we opened up Nevada County and Placer County and San Joaquin County. Wow. And then we have two offices in the state of Nevada. So what's going on here in San Jose? You know, in San Jose, as a matter of fact, on the way in, I, ch I talked with the site manager, uh, Ms. Chavez, and she was informing me that they're, they're at 40 cases right now. And we, we need more cases. We need, mm -hmm. definitely need to, you know, get the word out as, as much as we can that we're, we're um, looking for more cases to serve. And part of the, what's, what they're working with is there is a, a beating classes and, and a talking circles and, of course, the cash aid that we provide our families and the assistance to the children in school, mm -hmm. working with the different programs in the community, uh, working with the Wellness Center and trying to develop that relationship, working with CTC and that relationship, mm -hmm. and, and really just, in a sense, learning through the process of how we're going to be able to build these collaborative partnerships. And I, I just appreciate the, the patience that the agencies have and making sure that, that we're doing this in such a way that, that it's going to stand for, for time in regards to the MOUs or contracts that we may develop with other agencies. So I apologize for it taking so long, but also just uh, uh, thank the, and appreciate the patience of the agencies here in town. It's a big project. Yes, definitely. You know what I noticed that uh, I think w what our community needs is is like a uh, clothing bank, maybe for uh, mm. children. So uh, I guess I can talk to you later off, off, of, off of the show. You know, I was Absolutely. thinking about having maybe you guys could be the facilitator about it, and we we could um, have uh, people come by and donate clothes and have hit, you know boys and girls, you know, for infants and stuff like that. Because I think that's a big need for our community. You know, we've we've done that in Sacramento and mostly uh -huh. for the for the children in the state of Nevada because it's mm -hmm. pretty cold. Right. And uh, it's called uh, Coats for Kids. Mm 
uh -huh. and we gathered so many coats that we actually started giving coats away to anybody that wanted them. <laughs> Take them out of the street. Uh, yeah, we gathered over <laughs> 2,000 coats. Wow. And that was a couple years ago. Um, this last year, and, and what we're planning to, to do now is shoes for kids, mm -hmm. because yeah. we're finding that a lot of the, the children in snow country, where there is snow, yeah. right. don't have the proper shoes. So we're trying to gather shoes for kids for the state mm -hmm. of Nevada. Well, we attended your um, back to school night here mm -hmm. in San Jose, mm -hmm. and you gave backpacks and I think uh, clothing allowance or book allowance exactly. or something. School, school materials. Exactly. That that now that, that service is strictly for the cash eligible families. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that not only do we give them the backpacks and the supplies, but we also talk to them about being motivated to go to school as parents mm -hmm. and as the family going to school. And so you saw the speakers that were there, right, very motivational. Right. We also ask them to sign a pledge that they are going to help their children with school and with homework. And, and at that point, once they do that, then we give them their backpacks. We give them a, a voucher either to Mervyn's or Walmart mm -hmm. for clothes, for back to school clothes and supplies. You know, the supplies that the children need to get back right. to school. Do you follow up with them throughout the, the uh, school year to see how they're doing? We do. But, and part of the reason that we do that is that we have grade incentives. So oh. depending on what grades the children get or if the adults are in school, what grades the adults get, uh, will give them an incentive at the end of each reporting mm -hmm. period. So not only do we have to maintain a record of what their grades are, but we also, in that sense, are able to assist them if they need tutoring or th sometimes mm -hmm. the adults need uh, computers or transportation to mm -hmm. and from school. All that counts for participation in our program. Oh, what great. we're trying to do is make sure that everybody's participating, either working, going to school, or working towards becoming self-sufficient. Sure. What we don't want is to just send the check out and, and expect yeah. people to do nothing. Right. Um, everybody's got to get up and, 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 uh, that's and a, attempt. That's a good way, you know, if you want, if you want money, hey, make a good grade. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's very good Absolutely. Yeah. And it's been very successful in the Sacramento office. We have recently had a back to school night there where we had 450 people in wow. attendance. Here at the San Jose office, it's still rather small caseload, so we might have had maybe 50 to 100 people at that event. Uh, I'm positive and confident that next year's back to school will be much bigger. Oh, yeah. That's a good event, good incentive. I'll go back to school just to get that great. I'll yeah. see. <laughs> come back, I'll come over here with a backpack. backpack. <laughs> yeah. Now, I understand you just got a grant. Can yes. you tell us about that? Sure. We, uh, the Washoe Tribe recently applied for a grant with the uh, Administration for Native Americans at the federal government level. And what that grant is for is to assist um, all tribal TANF programs to learn the promising practices of other programs. Mm -hmm. So we got together with the Native Wellness Institute and we visited seven different programs. Now don't ask me the seven programs right now because I don't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember the programs I have visited. Now we visited Coeur d'Alene out in Idaho. We also visited the Ness Pierce tribe out in Idaho. And then we visited recently, just got back from Alaska uh, last week and we visited Tanana Chiefs wow. in Fairbanks, Alaska. And in Fairbanks, Alaska, they're doing some tremendous work. It's the, the most mature program in the United States. Uh, the gentleman that started that program has been the executive director of their client development for 28 years. His name is Don Chersell, and he is, is really knowledgeable when it comes to TANF. Their service delivery area is as big as the state of Texas. They have wow. villages where they're serving villages, they're serving families, where it's 45 degrees below zero for over a month at a time. So I mean, their reality is much different than ours. Mm -hmm. um, while I was there, the sun comes up at 10 and goes down at 4. And yeah. so the daylight <laughs> is very short. And it could get down to negative 60 degrees. So you probably, in a situation like that, you're going to have people who are going to get depressed because they're not Absolutely. around the sun. And they, they're in, coped up inside the house. You get cabin fever. So you have to deal with a lot of different, more emotional problems. and. and the physical problems because they can't go out and exercise. Well, it, and, and the indigenous people that live there have lived there for thousands yeah. of years mm -hmm. and they're surviving and they're thriving um, and they're not leaving their villages. I mean, these yeah. are their spiritual lands and um, they've adapted. Um, yeah. and they've adapted very well and, and they survive and they do a lot of subsistence work. Uh, participation for their TANF program may be gathering salmon mm -hmm. or maybe gathering mm -hmm. other food, um, elk for instance. So if they go hunting, that counts for participation in their program. Oh, I don't great. recommend we implement that here in San Jose, <laughs> but, Probably not. Um, but that's their reality in Alaska. Very interesting. Yeah. The Ness Pierce tribe, as a matter of fact, they're building, with their TANF customers, they're building storage sheds, and they oh, sell really? them. Really? And so those are some ideas um, that, that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah, hands on. So did you find um, any models that you could replicate throughout your program? 
Absolutely, and not so much models. We call them promising practices in the fact, uh, an example, for instance, Tenant Achieves uh, requires their cash aid customers to put away 3% of their cash assistance per month into a savings account. Mm -hmm. That savings account can only be uh, used if they have a successful outcome from the programs. That is, if they get a job mm -hmm. or go to higher education and get mm -hmm. a job, then they can gather that savings and use for whatever they want to use it for. If they have a negative outcome of the program, that money goes back to the program. So on the one hand, it's a motivator to have oh, people definitely. really participate, right. but on the other hand, it's really teaching the entire community the concept of savings yeah. right. and That's how you so can important. save $30 a month and all of a sudden it, it accumulates. So right. that's one idea, right. one, one small idea. It's not a model program per se, but it's a promising practice. It's a step, yeah. It's a step. Sure. Definite step. We've been doing a lot more with financial literacy mm -hmm. with all of our students as well. So I, I think that's so important. Absolutely. When someone's starting out, starting to get their first job and how to open up a bank account that's right. and save. 401k is understanding what Oftentimes we take that for granted. Yeah. You know, in different positions, we look at 401k and my savings account and my checking account. And there's a lot of people, unfortunately, that, that don't have bank accounts. That's right. Yeah. And so that's teaching them that is, is really an important, in my mind, an important method for them. Yeah, sometimes, learn. yeah, a lot of people just don't even think about it. And, they, you know, they're so used to doing the, the same old things over and over again. And then they don't understand that if they take it to a check cashing place that they're getting actually charged all this amount of money. And if they actually open up a banking account, they could save, you know, money rather than give it out all the time. Right. You know, just on just getting your money. That's right. You know? That's right. So part of that is, is the financial literacy work. And we teach a financial literacy curriculum based on uh, Native American traditions. Oh, and good. so that's a really a, an exciting uh, curriculum that we've successfully implemented in Sacramento. And I'm holding off a little bit here in San Jose until we get a, a bigger caseload and let staff kind of get used to the, what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring that here. Now, how are you dealing with the different nations you know, of, of Indians you know, in this Bay Area? You know, not one thing works one way. You, know, you have to find like a a balance between all of them, right? Are Absolutely. You guys having problems Absolutely. With or is that okay? Is that working out for you guys? You know, and it's 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 a um, work in progress per mm -hmm. se. Part of part of I think the answer to that is having staff that um, that looks like the community, mm -hmm. um, having a multicultural staff. Yeah. Uh, as you know, here in San Jose, the the indigenous community is is multicultural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our staff is multicultural. So, uh, I think that's step number one. I think the other step is respect. Mm -hmm. Respect of all cultures, um, indigenous and otherwise, yeah. and just that that whole concept of, of the deepest respect for for our people, for for the people in, in general, that's been really helpful in being able to to, um, in a sense, uh, show that, teach that, and and have that as a as a working rule that mm -hmm. you respect everybody that comes through the store. You treat you treat them as, as as if the president just walked in. Yeah, that's and that's important in my mind. Point. Um, also, there are some challenges, though, in the urban in the urban settings in regards to outreach and how you mm -hmm. do outreach, mm -hmm. making sure that you are respecting all the cultures and the traditions and not stepping on someone else's culture and yeah. tradition. Um, you know, owl feathers is a good example. You know, some people really is, it's a highly highly esteemed uh, item, mm -hmm. and for others, it's not. And yeah. so we have to be very careful about that. Uh, respect for elders, I think, is something that goes across. In my mind, goes across all mm -hmm. indigenous uh, cultures mm -hmm. and traditions. So there are certain items that we feel comfortable and confident that we can share and mm -hmm. use as tools to attract the, the indigenous cultures. But there's other items that we have to be a little bit more uh, conscientious about. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, our, our people have to also take in mind that um, and also respect that their elders and their relatives have gone through a lot of things just for them to be where they're at. And they have to understand and respect that their their own culture and then pass it on to someone else. You know, become a teacher. You Absolutely. know, you know your culture. Someone else doesn't know your culture, teach them. And then they can teach your, you, you um, they can teach their culture to you too. Absolutely. Because, yeah, it's always different, you know. Yes, and that's very important. Yeah. Very important. So now, after San Mateo opens up, everything's up and running? That's the last... Everything office. will be up and running. And <laughs> uh, the challenge at that point is to really increase our caseload. Okay. And, and part of the challenge is, especially in the urban centers, in the urban settings, in the rural offices, our caseload goes up to our maximum literally in a couple of months. Um, maybe the word gets out quicker. Uh, maybe there's more need. Uh, uh, who knows? In the urban settings, it, across California, programs, tribal TANF programs are having a real challenge in increasing their caseload. And that's just for, for various different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's our challenge here in San Jose, our challenge in San Francisco, 
um, and in Oakland is getting that outreach. Well, for our, our audience, can yeah. you tell people what they need to qualify, how they would qualify the, the basic for the program? Yeah, I can give you the basic qualifications. And, and the, the bottom line is that you have to be a family that's caretaking a Native American child. And we define a Native American child as someone that is um, a federally recognized Native American tribe and or a descendant of the California Judgment Roll. And so, so that's the, the basic criteria, just to uh, the first line of eligibility. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into income eligibility. So the, the resources that you have, the income that you have, you can't go over 125% of the federal poverty guideline. That's another criteria. The third criteria is that you have to live in the service delivery area. So here in San Jose, you must live in Santa Clara County. If you don't live in Santa Clara County, then you have to go to another program. We can't serve you. Okay. So those are the basic criteria. Now, there's the, the application process, unfortunately, but due to the federal regulation, is rather long. Um, the application process is not fun, and we try to streamline it as much as possible. But the bottom line is that the federal government requires us to gather certain information. And unfortunately, there's really no way around it. And so the application is 10, 15 pages long. But our wow. staff will assist the family to fill it out. And uh, um, they don't have to necessarily read the application. We will fill it out verbally yeah. with them. So that's not going to be a deterrent for anyone coming in who has some physical problems or, Absolutely or even visual problems. That's that right. Your staff we'll will take assistance. care of that. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. That's, that's and that's we're looking forward to, to help the, the, the families that need the assistance. Great. And so, and there is the, the birth certificates need to be provided and social it's security cards. It's pretty common cards. for most Absolutely. county programs. Most county Absolutely. or government things, you sure. have to just a lot of Absolutely. Tape. And for us, we have the additional aspect of the tribal ID. Right. Yeah. And so that sometimes is a, is a burden. So if somebody is already receiving assistance through the county, they can transfer over, can't they? If Absolutely. If they meet the other eligibility that you just spoke of? Absolutely. If they meet the Native American mm -hmm. eligibility, right. they can transfer over. We feel that, it, that it's a positive for the family to transfer over. Um, simply because we are a culturally relevant program and we do in fact pay a hundred dollars more than the county pays in CalWORKS. Well, that's good incentive. So that's a positive and, and the aspect is that we have flexibility in program participation. So it can include, not that all of it will include be the, just this, but it can include ceremony, mm -hmm. it can include uh, certain traditional cultural activities and for us what we feel in our philosophy is that by teaching culture it helps cure the family. In Spanish, mm -hmm. they say cultura cura, culture cures. Mm -hmm. And we wholeheartedly believe that. We really feel that, especially among the youth, mm -hmm. that if we can get them to identify with their culture and their tradition and their identity as, as indigenous people, that they'll be better suited and better armed to stay away from drugs and to stay away from gangs That's and right. to really motivate them to go to school and learn more about their culture and tradition and history. So we're hoping to use that as a tool to help motivate the families to become self-sufficient. Well, you're doing a great job, yeah, and we appreciate all well, the work. Well, thank you very and much. Thank you for coming. Keeping well, thank us you for having us back. Posted. We really appreciate that. I mean, you guys have been great support for us. I know you're getting the word out there, and we really appreciate that very much. And hopefully, we can talk some other day in regards we to how will. else we can work together and, and what else we can do. Your well, thank you. Quick question or, or quick? Um, oh, we're running out of time. Okay, <laughs> we'll go back to the announcements, I guess. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have you on soon, and we'll catch up again. Oh, thank you. Keep him in line now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try. Right. <laughs> we need more time. Listen, we I, need well, more time. You want to do our show, huh? <laughs> well, just an well, hour and a half. I have something. To, you've seen the commercials for um, identity theft, right? Yeah. The was it the the. Where the, the old lady card, comes the charge on, card, yeah, yeah, and they say identity theft yeah. and American Express and all this, and then you see a, a woman with a man's voice, a mm -hmm. man with a little girl's voice, and yeah, all kinds and the little of little kids and all. Well, yeah. I have something to show you. Okay. Let's take a look. Look at the screen. Once I acquired the bank account number and ATM pin, I was set free at Indian Market. I bought two Marcus Ammerman beaded bracelets. 600 bucks each? Sure, I could afford it. I also saw a Dan and Minga painting that matched my living room rug. Now how could you pass that up? Then I made some friends that helped me down 50 margaritas at El Faro. I never paid a $900 tab before, but I guess there's a first time for everything. <laughs> American Indian Express, helping you keep your identity. Once I acquired the bank account number and the pen, I hit the powwow highway. I traveled the country, went to Pro Fair, the Gathering, the Red Earth, 
and some other one in Long Beach. There were snags everywhere. I had more than I care to remember, especially this one named uh, Rainbow Juice and her cousin, Blossoming Nectar. The whole trip cost 7,000 bucks. I could afford it. Man, I had a good time. <laughs> American Indian Express, helping you keep your identity. See, that's a new spin, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it has a good message. You know, I really like the message. It's all about what we were talking about earlier in our show, about learning your culture and showing other people your culture and, and learning culture from other, other people. And uh, not getting lost like that, you know. <laughs> well, I think it's stealing the American Express, but the Indian Express credit yeah. card. <laughs> kind of like a metaphor. Yeah. That was uh, produced by Terry Jones, and we had actually his fry bread little... Um, his little short show. Short uh, yeah. film on. And actually, we have a couple more that we'll be showing in the You're future. In no, 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 we don't have time for any more tonight, but we will show you some more. He did one <laughs> on the Indian Health Center. Uh -huh. And that's Not this a, Indian that's Health a, Center. Just, no, 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 no. Okay. A in, in, well, actually, a. it's in New York. <laughs> okay. The Indian He's Health from New York. York. We met him in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's a film producer. He has some great work coming out, but he did give us some samples of some of the work he's done, and some of it's really comical. Yeah. He has a good sense of humor. And we're going to have some, uh, I guess, some information. So if you want to get his some of his samples of his tapes, you can you can call, contact us and we can get you that information. But it, yeah, this one is really funny. Plus, Freibird is really hilarious, too. Yeah, that was yeah. cute. He, he's doing one on the casinos. Mm -hmm. And um, I think PBS picked that one up, so that should be out PBS, probably next POV year or something. PBS, POV or something like that. That right. one's more of a, it's not a comedy, but it is a good education. That's more of a one. documentary. Yeah, it's a documentary. So. But it's always nice to uh, meet people like him and talented uh, filmmakers. Oh, yes, And definitely. if you haven't seen the movie, <laughs> The movie we're talking about is Flags of Our Father. With Adam Beach. Adam yeah. plays um, Ira Hayes. Yeah. And you should go see it. Go support him. He does an excellent job. He's just the, he's just oh, one of yeah, the stars definitely. and he, he's wonderful, wonderful. He's a, he has a, a really good way of um, acting and showing emotion and, and it really portrays him as him wanting to put the truth out and that was really, it just shows his character. Or, you know, that and, was, and the one that really had compassion. We're out of yeah. time, so we'll see you next Sunday at 6 o'clock. Good night. Good night.